Innovation distinguishes between a leader and a follower. Regular boring cars are plentiful, but it's those who dare to change that are remembered. Hey everyone, I'm Stipe, and these are the seven most innovative cars ever made. Do the I intro thing. Number seven. Because fuel costs money, people want to use less of it. Well, duh. So obviously the goal is to sell cars that are more fuel efficient. And while there have been many improvements to the recipe, nothing compares to the game-changing effect of the electric hybrid system in Toyota Prius. Even the most efficient gasoline engines convert only about 35% of fuel into movement at best, whereas electric motors can do more than double that. So combining the two will make a serious difference, especially in slow start-stop congested city traffic. Just look at these numbers. Still, melding the two very different powertrains to work in harmony and feel like you're driving a regular car was no small task. But if anyone could deliver it, it will be Toyota. With all their techno wizardry, engineering prowess, and reputation for quality, it's almost as if they were the chosen ones to come up with such an advanced car. Because I don't think people would trust to buy such an experimental car from any other brand. And so today, 25 years later, we have hybrids. Millions of them. And if you ask me, they're the best solution. Screw those electric cars. Hashtag range anxiety. I mean, credit where credit is due. Good job, Prius. Number six. In the 1950s, Britain was facing a problem. Because some politics happened in Egypt, Nigel, the Brit guy, could buy only four gallons of fuel per month. And that would get him, let me calculate, times 17, mm, nowhere. A swift answer to this crisis was the BMC Mini, a miniature car that would sip fuel through a straw and still offer all the practicality of a regular car. Despite its small dimensions, you could still fit a priest, Mexican wrestler, Tom Hanks, and Pink Panther inside, plus their luggage. What is love? 80% of the floor plan was used for that purpose, which doesn't leave much room for the engine wheels and bolts and whatnot. That's why the wheels were pushed outside as much as possible and were reduced to 10 inches only. This leaves some extra space inside the wheel arches for fuel tank and other necessities. The 850cc four-pot engine was mounted sideways with the gearbox right under it, and the cooler was off to the side. Instead of suspension coils, it had smaller, cheaper, and lighter rubber cones that gave it a go-kart handling. It was actually fun to drive. This sort of smart thinking gave the Brits a car when a car was impossible to use, and it gave the world a blueprint for what the budget car ought to be like. Number five. I couldn't decide which one to pick because they're both equally important in conception of modern supercars, so let's do both starting with the Lambo. Yora is the first supercar with the engine mounted in the middle, right behind the driver's seat. Up until that point, supercars were just extra fast grand tours, really, which wasn't setting them apart all that much. And then this shows up. Holy moly, look at that shape. Look at those swooping lines and bullhorns on the doors. It was a car like no other on the road, crazy in every way and with record-setting performance just to make you lust even more. Miura is the genesis of proper supercars, but the Porsche 959 molded this category into what it is now, accessible. Up until the 959, supercars were raw. They were pretty faces with lots of power, lots of shaking, lots of but not very easy to drive. Porsche changed that. Their car was a legitimate 197 miles per hour technological marvel with electric seats, adjustable suspension, and computerized four-wheel drive system with torque vectoring. Then there were headlight washers, tire monitoring system, hollowed out magnesium wheels, anti-shatter windshield, ABS system, and a computer-managed turbo flat six instead of some big brute V12. 959 was the first supercar that even your granny could drive. Who says supercars should be uncivilized? Number four. Ah yes, the special class. A harbinger of things to come. If you want to know what regular cars will be like in 10 or 15 years in the future, you just need to look at the current S-Class. Let me give you a taste of things these cars pioneered throughout their life. Things we now take for granted. Analog braking, electronic stability control, crumple zones, fully independent suspension, airbags, smart keys that you don't have to take out of your pocket, radar-guided cruise control that reacts to traffic speed, a crash testing program. Yes, the S-Class was the first car to be crash tested before selling it to the public. And there's even more. 
The fact is, the cars of today simply wouldn't be as advanced and safe as they are if it wasn't for the Mercedes showing the way. And now, let's see what else you can expect to trickle down to our future cars. High definition laser headlights, hologram GPS navigation display, road bumps, pre-scanning and suspension adjusting, connected ecosystem for sharing information with others in traffic, night vision, and AI assistant, among others. I don't know about you, but this sort of stuff gets me really excited. Number 3 When it was first shown in 1955, the Citroen DS looked out of this world, literally. This is what European cars looked like at the time. And then this flying saucer comes along. In the first 10 days of unveiling, 80,000 pre-orders were taken, a record that stood unbeaten until Tesla Model 3. So what made it so special? Well, Citroen decided not to care about what others are doing and just go their own way. And that's the kind of mentality needed to innovate. As a result, you have this totally weird but awesome shape that was designed in a wind tunnel. The roof is fiberglass to keep the center of gravity low. Windows have no frames. Steering wheel has only one spoke. It was the first production car with disc brakes, but the brake paddle was a mushroom shape. A few years later, some awesome looking headlights that swiveled in the corners were introduced. This is on a 55 year old car. Mine still doesn't have that. And then there was the DS's piste de resistance, the suspension. Instead of using coils and dampers, Citroen went with a hydro pneumatic solution that made the DS the most comfortable car in the world. It was so smooth, Rolls Royce asked if they could use it on their own cars. The suspension also allowed it to raise or lower itself. You could actually change a tire without the jack lift and drive around with one wheel missing entirely. The car simply levels itself. This feature once saved the French president from assassination. No wonder French people call this car the goddess. Number 2 By the looks of it, in the 21st century, many cars will be electric, whether we like it or not. Thanks, Elon! You and your Model S! But actually, the Model S is a fantastic car, precisely because it is so different. It may look like a regular sedan, but this thing has more interior space, better safety, cooler tech, and more grunt than any other car in the world. Those electric motors are small, but much more reliable and efficient than anything that runs on liquid dinosaurs. Did I mention this dad car can outrun almost every supercar in the drag strip? And let's not forget the pure ballsiness of Tesla engineers. They're like, wouldn't it be cool if the car could drive itself while you sleep on the back seat? Yes, let's do that. Or if an empty car comes to meet you at the door. Or if it was getting software updates and features over the internet. Or if you could draw on the giant touchscreen. Who knows what other crazy ideas they'll come up with next. But be sure of one thing, everyone will be in a hurry to copy it or they'll go out of business. I only wish it was a hybrid. Hashtag range anxiety. Number one. This car, it will change the way cars are built forever. It was the first car with 3D printed structural components, which makes it incredibly light, strong, compact, easy to develop and build. Just look at those suspension arms and their intricate organic design. They're the product of computer generating almost in an evolutionary way what would be the optimal shape for strength and lightness. You just give it some joint and bolt points and let it do the work. Once it's done, you just print it out. And the printer doesn't care what it's creating, a suspension arm, crumple zones, body frame, or a chair. So there's no need to spend time and money on new tooling. And these parts are far superior to any other method of building them. There's also less material waste, which optimizes the cost of production even more. Plus, it brings back the art of coach building, where artists can simply build a different skin for your frame. You may have also noticed that the car is incredibly narrow. That's great because it reduces the frontal area, which makes it incredibly aero efficient. And narrower car is also easy to maneuver. Plus, this is a two-seater. Because it has a small 2.8 liter V8 hybrid capable of over a thousand horsepower and a short but incredibly optimized honeycomb crumple zone, you can have two people sitting in line without making a car too long. Just imagine the Ferrari with tandem seats, a large V12 in the back, and an old school crumple zone. That thing would have been longer than the Pullman. The cars like the 21C just weren't possible before. And it's all thanks to the innovative 3D printed body structure. And that changes everything. And to round out the list and make it an even 10, let's add three more. See if you can recognize them.
By the way, if you ever wondered which production car holds the record for being the widest in history and many other car records, go check out this video here. And cut!